drop since yesterday, but we did have sunshine yesterday. It's very dry, the perfect conditions really. We have the Grand National Trophy here. We've seen some horses and very special guests. We are now going to speak to the defending champion, if you like, Gorak Ramblers trainer Lucinda Russell from Perth Thinking Ross in Scotland. And you've got the dog. Oh, look at that. <laughs> totally, totally unfazed by TV. That is Judy. Lucinda's dog has probably been out for a walk as well. Good morning, Lucinda. First of all, I have to say condolences because it was a reminder yesterday of how hard it can be for yards and trainers when you do lose a horse. And we saw Giovinco perish yesterday. Just because people sometimes overlook the impact it can have when you lose, like a family member, one of your horses. It is. Look, every, everyone that's had a dog or a horse or, or people, you know, you know how much death is just a horrible, horrible thing. It is inevitable, but it's horrible. And it, it just shakes us. And I think it shook us even more on the eve of the national car horse that is so special to us, Giovinco, uh, the girl that looked after him, Wendy Gidding, she was just mm. in tears. She was inconsolable. Mm. Um, it's a horrible, horrible part of um, it's a horrible part of life, but mm. it's an inevitable part of life. And um, well, that's in horrible. mind. Big strides are being made, aren't they, to change the, the course for the Grand National? Various changes to help the welfare of jockeys and horses. What have you made of the changes, and how do you think it will affect things? I think it's brilliant. I mean, yeah. I think it's a, uh, you know, well. While it was a sad day yesterday, we do everything that we can to prevent death. And that's why we know how awful it is. And I think um, Aintree should really be um, lauded in how much they have changed things. They're very proactive about things rather than being reactive. And, um, you know, reducing down the field size, it will have an impact. It, it's good. It's a really good thing. And I think it just shows how racing does want to try and make things better as best that they can. Absolutely. And what a special day it could be for Corak Rambler, the winner last year. Aiming today, then, to become, well, the only horse apart from Tiger Roll to win back-to-back -back national since Red Rum in the 70s. Yeah, and I remember Red Rum in the 70s. Yeah, I do. So, I, so, me too. So, obviously, we're of an age, but... No, you're, you're, um, <laughs> the, um, yeah, no, it is great. And I always said that I want to correct to be historical, and I think this is his chance of, of really going down in history. Um, he's a wonderful horse. I've just been to see him in the stables. He's relaxed. He just grew. We, we were here last night when he arrived, and, you know, he just loves his place. So yeah. he, he, he grows an extra hand, and he's so proud of himself. He looks fantastic, as do the other horses. You know, we, we just have to make sure that everything's right for them on yeah. the day and just hope everything goes well. Now talk us through the emotions when you've trained a winner. Obviously, you had one for Arthur a few years ago, then Corrett Rambler. What, what's the, the, the aftermath of a, a fantastic, world-famous win of winning the National Light? Yeah, well, you know, this is what we're talking about. You, you touched on it to start with, is the absolute depths of things go wrong and then the absolute highs of, of winning the National. I mean, I can't tell you, it's, it's just a... It's a it's almost like an out-of-body experience, you know. It's, it, you, you get terribly lightheaded just get delighted for all the owners for, the, for for Derek for everyone that looks after the horse everyone back at the stables in Kinross you know it's really for them that we do it all yeah. well good luck then trying to become back to back <laughs> I mean, amazing wouldn't it to as you say emulate the feet of Red Rum wow. are you a golf fan? I am a golf well, fan we, we, we're reporting on the Masters as well this morning it's very tight at the top yes <laughs> any yeah. tips? well no I, I was out of it yesterday so who, who is at the top? well I can tell you we've got a three way tie yeah. the Americans high winds have played havoc with the balls on the greens, as you can imagine. Yeah. And we have the three-way American tie. Scotty Scheffler. Scheffler. Bryson DeChambeau and Max Home. Do you know, I've backed Carrick Rambler and Scotty Scheffler to win. Oh, that's an omen, isn't it? Isn't wow. It? <laughs> that could be great, couldn't it? Also, a bit of a history for Tiger Woods, who made a record 24th consecutive halfway cut at the Masters. Our sports correspondent, Andy Swiss, was watching. I, I think William Mullins will win. Um, ah. I am Maximus or Capadano. I think yeah. they will be the, they'd be the two for me. I'd be with Capadano. He's a better price. I think he's a better jumper, so... Yeah, I'd be a Capadano. Great stuff. Thanks for giving us that dose of reality, Ruby. Great to see you. <laughs> there we go. We'll have more from Aintree a little later. But for now, back to Charlie and Nagger.